We are now recording. Stand by for audio. All right. Good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am excited to fire you guys up with a whole new way of podcasting. I just cracked the mold tonight. We're bringing back a repeat co-host. This is a very intelligent man. And the reason why we're bringing him back is, and we're doing this, I'm not kidding you guys, literally right now, we are Facebook Live on the Live the Fuel page. Uh, our co-host is sharing it to his page. So I don't care where you guys are following this. We have real-time listeners, real-time watchers. And when this podcast comes out, you'll be able to go back and find this video content as well. Uh, but this gentleman's been on the show two times, okay? We've talked about the American Diabetes Association. We talked about their idiocy behind uh, healthy fats and cholesterol. So today, I'm excited to stream this podcast live over Facebook because we are about to dive into my 23 and me DNA data. That's right. If you've never heard of 23 and me, I bought it. Actually, my fiance bought it as a Valentine's Day gift because she knows I'm such a geek. So without further ado, we're going to geek out today on 23 and me. Dr. Anthony J of AJ Consulting, welcome back to the show, sir. Scott, thanks for having me. Looking forward to this one. Are, are we doing too much today? We're recording audio, we're recording video, we're streaming live over Facebook. Am I making this too exciting? Oh, this is perfect. This is, the, the whole thing is just amping me up. <laughs> I'm loving it, man. This is so, I'm, I'm so fired up. This is cool. So, and I'm literally, I gotta, I gotta switch tabs. I'm watching myself like 30 seconds delayed. I don't, I don't oh, know yeah. if that's happening on your end. So, um, it so is, let, yeah. I did so the same thing. When I posted on Instagram, that I got the 23andMe kit. I remember because you were the first one to comment like, dude, reach out to me when you get the data back. Yep. And I had no idea that this is actually one of your services. We have had you on twice now on the podcast. Had no clue that, I mean, I know you know about DNA and your book on estrogeneration and hormones, but let's, for people watching this live right now and listening to this podcast, let's catch them up. Besides estrogeneration, important book, um, you're now working with the Mayo Clinic. Let's, let's give everybody a quick synopsis of why you're so cool. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's going to be a really short synopsis. Uh, <laughs> Besides the fact you're an awesome fisherman. Yeah, and a hunter, bow hunter. No, I, uh, I, when I was doing my book, Astro Generation, in the book release, I basically had cut back on a lot of my DNA analysis because I was doing so many podcasts and so much promotion for that. Hmm. But now that I, I've kind of slowed that down, and I'm actually working on a book, uh, where I simplify DNA analysis for people in a book format so they can buy a book, get their 23 in me, and then, you know, look at my book and try and piece together some actionable plans for their diet, for their sleep, for their athletic profile, that sort of thing, just based on my book. So obviously I, I enjoy talking to people and doing one-on-one -on -one consults like we're going to do today. Yeah, I mean that's that's ideal because people have questions. I oftentimes ask people to send their blood work and their lab test data, which I actually forgot with you because, you know, it's a podcast and it's not <laughs> it's not normally what I do. Normally, I talk about my book and you know the estrogen chemicals, on which we've done on the show, so. which we've done. Yeah, so I forgot to have you send my your blood work, your vitamin D levels, whatever. But that's okay because we have so much to talk about. It's it's going to fill the time. Hey, man, I'm happy to create this into a series if it helps promote what, everything that you're doing and all the people that you're helping with your research and obviously these new books because I had no idea that that was one of the next books you were working on. I know last time we talked, what is your lineage of books called again that you were trying to, you're, you're looking to build out? Yeah, it's called Chagrin and Tonic. Yeah, so please define that again because I remember I had a hard time <laughs> saying it the first time. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the name of my book series and my YouTube channel. And chagrin means effectively when you see something and you're shocked by it and usually disdain, you know, like it's a bad thing. It's a negative thing. Chagrin, you see something with chagrin and that's the way I view a lot of the modern medical and scientific research issues. Um, and then tonic means obviously means solution. And of course it's a play on words, it's a play on gin and tonic. So uh -huh. chagrin and tonic is kind of like you recognize big problems in our research and health worlds and then you, proposed solutions. So that's my goal. Okay. So for the listeners and the watchers, because we are Facebook Live for the first time as a podcast, I've wanted to want to do this ever since I launched the show, but the tech wasn't there yet. And now we've got it. So I'm going to try and calm down on the fired up stuff. Uh, but so 
to re rewind for our live watchers who are first time watching, and when this show airs over the audio waves and over the YouTube waves, because we put this stuff everywhere, uh, doc, Dr. J, which there's, that's a fun little thing there, Dr. J. Um, I'm going to do a little screen share. He's been on the show twice. And so we're going back to, oh God, I think episode 72, right? Yeah. So episode 72, which was May of last year. So next month, it'll be one year since you first came on the show. And that's where we dove more into the book and what estrogeneration is all about and estrogenics. Um, and then we had you back on to help me, really help all of us <laughs> vent on the inaccuracies that were published back in June of 2017 around right. inf inflammation and the AHA, American Heart Association, and the ADA, and coconut oil and sugar and everything else. So we're not going to talk about that today because we could really dive back into that. <laughs> yeah, that um, yeah. But hey, we're catching up, man. So you convinced me over Instagram to reach back out to you and say, hey, let's dig into your data. Why? should people consider even digging into the 23andMe data besides me, because I'm a health nut and a geek. Um, but why should other people even consider doing what I'm doing with you right now? Yeah, it's because 23andMe, they're an excellent company and they, they replicate their, you know, if you give them a sample one week and give them a sample next week, they have amazing ability to replicate. Hmm. So they'll have literally 99.9% .9 you know, accuracy between the two samples you send them. Wow. But they're not exceptional at, analyzing the data they're really good at creating it and giving you your dna data and replicating but honestly they're you know they're that's their expertise and so you know i've i try and fill that need by you know giving people a lot more information because there's a ton of research that's out there so, and i want people to be able to do things that are practical not just know that you have blue eyes or you know, know that your your what your hair color is based on your DNA because who cares? You already know that stuff. Which I'm brown and brown, so there's nothing exciting there. <laughs> well, you actually you actually were a blue eye carrier. Really? Um, oh. Just for the just for the girls out there, for the women <laughs> in your life. Um, uh, my kind of fiance will probably, that, so. without her being here or saying anything inappropriate, I'll just say, well, he's brown for sure because he's sometimes full of. I'll just let other people answer the rest of that. <laughs> well, you're also unlikely to go bald. You had a plus plus gene for uh, keeping your hair, which obviously I don't have. So, you know, you have a bunch of good stuff. We have a ton to talk about. But Well, actually, I might be wrong. You could probably geek out about this. But is it true that I read a study saying that baldness is a sign of advanced uh, testosterone? It's so does partially... that mean you're just extra manly? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, you know. You said you hunt and you fish, man. That's pretty manly. Well, it's related to a hormone called DHEA. And, you know, every time people try and uh, get rid of baldness, well, not every time, but oftentimes in the research, when you try and eliminate baldness, you end up with cancer. So it's a risky business to play with those hormones. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's, what, you, that's what I've heard too. <laughs> okay. So we'll take that, right? Because I got a few other buddies that I work out with and stuff that are bald and we joke around about that. And I was like, I don't see it as a problem, especially if you look good and you can pull it off. So, yeah, no, it works. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so 23andMe data, yep. I would want to do this for God, two years. I mean, I remember when I first got into podcasting, uh, I was listening to a podcast in the UK and there was another analysis company over there. I'm blanking on it. That was really focused around fitness side of it. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. But uh, they would actually analyze the 23andMe data. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think it was like fit something or some DNA fit. Probably. Yeah, yeah. that sounds right. I've heard, there's so many of them, honestly. There's a lot. Okay. So 23andMe is one of the, their brand has done very well. They've really gotten their act together to the point where you've now built this as a service and as a platform to help people not just look at the really fun generalized reports that we're getting on the website, which I enjoyed them, but... Mm -hmm. I said, well, I, admittedly, I haven't even read them all yet because I knew I was coming on with you. So I was like, let's skip past the fluff. Let's get into the dirt. So yeah. what are we yeah. getting into today? Yeah, so, and I've done all those reports. I've paid money, done a million different reports from a million different companies, Athletagene, you know, all of these ones. I don't even want to bring all the names up because honestly, most of them are just computerized number crunching and they're just giving you kind of a standardized report, especially, you know, so I like to dive in a lot deeper and and what I do is I send a three page report and honestly, it's really just two pages because the first page is just an introductory page. And I sent that to you also. Should I, should I screen share that? 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, here we go. Just go. Go right to page three on that, actually, and screen share page three. because. Uh, and by the way, for our listeners and watchers right now, because I'm actually, if I look down from the screen, I'm literally sharing this to all my different communities while we're doing this for you, uh, to thank you for doing this, because you know this is a paid service normally, right? And people need to know about this. So I've got the page up. You're saying I should go right to page three. So real quick for the listeners and watchers, I don't give a crap about HIPAA. I want to be transparent. Is this a HIPAA related thing? Because it's not really medical data, right? Is it? I don't know. No, no they, cons they consider this entertainment. You know? <laughs> um, and that's why one of the reasons 23 and me reports are so shallow is because they're worried about the FDA. They want to be experts at, you know, sequencing your DNA, but they don't, you know, giving the report. Again, it's pretty shallow and safe. Okay. So page three, you see these plus minuses. This is like plus 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 minus. Yes. It looks like code kind of. Um, let me zoom so, in a little bit on this here. There yeah. We go. And it, so let me explain that because you probably have a pretty good sense of this, but you know, a lot of people listening might not. Oh um, yeah. They're probably looking at all these letters. Like what the heck is all that? <laughs> yeah. And you probably are too, but for now, but I'll explain it. So plus plus. So in genetics, we all have two copies of every gene in our body. Um, except for eggs and sperms, sperm cells, those only have one copy of DNA. So when they fuse, then they have two copies. But, hmm. but effectively, all the cells in our body have two copies of DNA, one from our father and one from our mother. And so when you're analyzing genes, usually it's pretty common to do plus plus or plus minus or minus minus. Minus minus would be normal genes, you know, like a gene that most of the population has. It functions normally. It works plus minus would be a gene where you have a bad copy from one parent and a good copy from the other parent. And then plus plus, which are genes that I'm really flagging and, and highlighting are the ones that I'm really interested in. And those are genes that you have a bad copy from both parents. So the gene's not going to function properly. And specifically I'm looking at liver detox genes on this, on this three page report because they're incredibly practical. So when you find and identify a problem in liver detoxing or something like that, hmm. then you might want to avoid aluminum or whatever. Like say you have a, pro a problem processing aluminum. Well, then you obviously don't want to cook with aluminum foil because the aluminum is going to stay in your body a lot longer. It's neurotoxic. It lowers testosterone. So, you know, then that's a real practical specific thing. You've got this problem processing aluminum. Stop cooking with aluminum foil. Stop exposing yourselves more than normal people because it's going to stay in your body longer. So pretty simple. So that, that is something I should be concerned with. No, not you, but that's okay. just an example. Okay. You know, the okay. Theoretical example. So we'll get into all the specifics here. And, uh, I'll, you know, I, I, I'm avoiding anything that's like really confidential or really <laughs> worrisome, which you don't really have anyways. I mean, I really don't care. I mean, I, well, I, I, are, I pride myself on my transparency. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You do. And, and, and thankfully, you didn't have anything really. You, you were really positive with the Alzheimer's genes. You know, you don't have a really high risk for Alzheimer's or anything like that. Okay. I did and see we, that. I did read that report right away. <laughs> oh, yeah, good. Yeah, and we can get into that later. But for now, let's just start with the detox genes because you got the page up. And, and so, you know, you've got a plus plus on the COMT gene. Let's just start with that. Okay. So go back to page two now. All right. Let's and I've got this. Here. I've got my own copy here in my hand. So oh, there's all kinds of data in here. Wow. Should we start at the top? <laughs> yeah, let's start right at the top. Yep. There you go. So it says, here's what I found based on your gene variants. And these are, again, detox genes. Now, based on your specific plus plus COMT gene, and the COMT, that stands for catechol O methyl transferase. And now wow. you can see why we would just call it COMT as scientists. Um, and that's the way all these things are. They all have abbreviations and weird names. Hmm. But this one is interesting because you had two plus pluses on it. If I remember, you had like yes. back to page three, you had plus plus and a couple different spots on that gene. And what that means is like you have this whole protein, you have this enzyme that has a function and there's a couple positions on there that are screwed up in your case. So it's really functioning suboptimal. And what is it? What's the function? Well, it basically helps you to clear adrenaline and it, this gene flushes out salt and this protein, this enzyme flushes salt from your body and water. So, oh. yeah. So basically because you're going to be doing that at a higher level, you need to eat more salt and drink more water than normal than the average person. I do love to hydrate. Like I'm a water machine. So yep. 
Yep, that's why. Speaking so of that, I will, I will take a sip while you keep going. <laughs> yeah, and that's one of the reasons. I mean, you're more in tune with your body than most people, so you probably already have kind of picked up on that. But, you know, most people don't, they're not quite as in tune, and they, they need kind of that knowledge. Yeah, but Doc, I mean, uh, what about all these uh, articles that say that salt's bad? And it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kill my heart, kill me and heart disease and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, most of those exaggerate. And, and there are some genes that you can have that might mean salt gives you high blood pressure, but most people don't have those genes. You don't have those genes, thankfully. So you, every once in a while, you, you do get that where you get this weird situation where you have a gene that tells me that you should eat more salt. Mm. But then you have a different gene that tells me you're going to get high blood pressure if you're eating a lot of salt. So that's a tricky balance to, to ride, but thankfully you don't have that issue. So, so basically this weekend, I don't know if you saw on Instagram, I, I, I finally conquered Tuckerman Ravine in New Hampshire, Mount Washington. Awesome. I've been there. Yep. And on, on that hike up, man, it's all about layering. and Because I mean, it ended up being the 20s by the time we got up there to start that ski run. But the hike up, like you start sweating your butt off, you're de-layering. I should have basically had a salt lick with me because <laughs> yeah. I definitely purged a lot of salt and I think I needed some more. Yeah, for sure. And, and, I, I prefer this brand called Redmond, um, real salt. It's because it's cheap and it's, it's from an ancient seabed in Utah. Utah, so there's no, yeah. There's no microplastics and no estrogen chemicals in it, no radioactivity. I mean, our buddy Vinny has been talking about it on his podcast, Fitness oh, Confidential, wow. Vinny Tortorich. He's, he's oh, literally wow. been talking about him literally sucking on a piece of Redmond salt that he got from the mines. So that's awesome. Yeah, no, I'm a big fan of that stuff. And you know, and, and, I mean, you need potassium too. And that's another nice thing about these seabed salts is they have more balanced mineral profiles. It's not just sodium chloride and aluminum, you know, hmm. a lot of these processed salts actually have a lot of aluminum. Okay. Um, is it true not to, to, to stay on the salt subject for a second? Uh, like my fiance, she's a salt nut. She actually said she just always has to have salt according to her blood work. So maybe she's got the same thing we'd have. She probably um, does. Yeah. Is it true that uh, I learned from actually Vinny about Redmond sea salt? He might have learned it from the mines that we should not be eating the white sea salt because they use bleach. Is that true? Like apparently, I, no, no real salt is actually white. Like I wouldn't, it, I wouldn't be surprised. Pure white. Yeah, I would. I mean, you know, there's a guy. He's from. He's, he's from the UK. I think he wrote a book called The Salt Fix. Mm, yes, he's a real interesting guy. Real good scientist. He he used to be an editor on the. British Journal of Medicine. He might still be or the BMJ, British Medical Journal, which is an awesome medical journal because unlike American medical journals, the BMJ just oftentimes, like they'll just tell you what they really think. Like they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll put down vaccines and things like that. Whereas American Medical Journal, you'll never see anything written negative about vaccines, even if there are negative issues to, that are valuable to bring up. Yeah. Why is that, man? Why can't we just it's speak awesome. the truth? Yeah, it's money. It's mostly money in America. There's so much influence. <sighs> All right, well, go, go UK, yeah. man. Go, go British. Yeah. yeah. And that guy, the, the Salt Fix is a good book. I haven't read it, but I've, I, I've heard the guy speak and, and I'm, I've heard good things about the book. But anyways, going back to your, your, uh, your CUMT gene. So the other thing is ad adrenaline usually stays in your body longer with this gene issue. Hmm. And so it takes your, you a little bit longer to wind down, you know, in the evening. You don't want to get all amped up in the late evening. Or you yes. just mess with your sleep cycles. Yes, yes. I, I, I've, I've, I've been really hacking that because uh, studying all about circadian rhythm, proper sleep cycles. Actually, I just realized it's 8.30 p.m. Let me uh, put on my blue blockers. So, oh, very cool. Yeah. So, yeah, you're in a different time zone. Than now me. I'm in a super geek. So. Well, let's talk about <laughs> sleep for a second because normally I would go through all of these detox genes on like one of my sessions, mm -hmm. my consulting sessions. But let's just jump to sleep a little bit because – you know, that's something that's worth hacking and really valuable, obviously, to have good sleep. I think for anybody watching or listening to this, like it's one of the key components. It's not just your exercise and fitness and obviously diet and hydration is huge for your lifestyle. But to me, sleep is the third, like the top three, man. That's, that's how you feel your body, how you recharge your body. And that's where the sleep comes in. I, I think you can, you're backing me up on that. Oh, for sure. In fact, my DNA book that I'm writing is about sleep, diet, and training you know those Perfect. are the three the three components of the book the three separate like part one part two part three and then there's sub chapters but sleep is the first one yeah big priority Perfect. awesome and so you am, have, I, am i scrolling down or i stay in this section 
Now stay there for a minute. I'm going to go off script for a second because okay. I, I always do when I do DNA sessions because I look at thousands of different things and, you know, I'm flag certain ones to bring up. And the paper that I sent you and that you have up on your screen, that's detox, you know, liver enzymes, getting rid of salt, getting rid of potassium, whatever. I actually have a couple of detoxing days planned. So um, yeah. Yeah, before, before the end of next week, because I have a CrossFit competition, not this weekend, but next weekend. So uh, nice. I, I do this, just boost my energy, man, get the excess toxins out. Yeah, good. Uh, well, but staying back on, just going back to sleep, mm -hmm. um, you have a rare gene that indicates your sleep cycles are longer than normal. Hmm. And normal sleep cycles are about an hour and a half. Oh, well, they're about 90 minutes. Well, an hour and a half, yeah. <laughs> Same thing. Okay. Um, but yours are probably two hours. So, uh, like, if, you know, for normal people, myself included in this case, you know, I try and, I try and wake up on the third hour. You know, if I, if I have to get four hours of sleep, if all I have is four hours worth of time, I usually set my alarm at three hours because I know that's when my – otherwise, I'll be in some deep sleep cycle and it'll be, I'll be really groggy when I wake up. Okay. So it's usually I do six hours or nine hours, you know, somewhere in there or six, seven and a half hours, you know, every, some 90 minute, um, in, in, you know, interval. But for you, again, your sleep cycles are longer just genetically so that every two hours and that's easier to do the math. So for you, it'd be better to only sleep two hours than to sleep three hours, for example, you know, or as far as incrementation. Four. Yep. Yep. And I'm not saying you should sleep two hours. I'm just saying, you know, sleep eight hours instead of nine hours, or it's better to sleep. So I'm hours. even versus odd. I guess so. Yeah, sort yeah, of. Kind yeah. of. <laughs> this is a unique gene. It's an ATP sensitive potassium channel gene. So I'm, I'm confused um, a little bit though. So, okay. So I'm, I'm a genetically naturally a longer sleep cycle guy, but what, but when I'm hearing this from you, you're saying go two versus three, but that sounds less. So, well, go two versus 90 minutes versus. Oh, sorry. Nap. So two yeah. versus 90 minutes. Oh, so this is if, for example, I did a power nap or something like that, right? Yep, exactly. Okay. Yep. So I'm not, so my power nap needs to be a long power nap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little bit longer than normal. If you want to get a full cycle, right? I mean, you don't have to get a full cycle. You can wake up groggy and it's just a little bit tougher to get your, you know, get your wheels spinning. But so does this relate to REM sleep cycle, stuff like yep. that? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right, interesting. You had another. You had another sleep gene. Um, let me just look at it here. You, uh, you're plus minus for staying up late. So you're, you're not a plus plus. You're not an extreme night owl. Would be my prediction. But you, you're more of a late nighter. And I'm just totally predicting this. I don't know this, but it's based on your period circadian regulator gene. Hmm. Um, I don't know. What are you a morning person, a night person, kind of a little bit of both? both? Yeah, yeah I like I, I can. I, I would love to sleep in. Let's be real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday, if I can move my workout a little bit later, sometimes I really, it's for me, I'm excited to sleep in till like 8 a.m. Uh, or 9 a.m. Like all this week because of business, I, I'm out of, I mean, my fiance, she, she could sleep in later than me. I'm out of bed by 6, 6.30. Uh, and that's just how I program myself. I, if I can, I'd like to milk that puppy out till 7, 8 a.m., <laughs> And I've really focused on not trying to stay up past 11 p.m. I'm really yeah. focusing on that seven to eight hour window. Um, yeah. And but, you think that's, that's because you're disciplined and not so much because of your genetics probably. Okay. That's just me. I think, years I think of you're, practice. A little bit of a, you're a little bit of a mix. You're not a super night owl, but you're more of a night owl just genetically in my oh, opinion. Oh, when I used to party more? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> I used because I mean, well, that's interesting because I used, to, I used to be a bartender years ago. I was a bouncer years ago. So... I'd be up until three, four o'clock in the morning. And I know that technically humans are not, not naturally nocturnal. Isn't there something to that as well? Yeah. I don't know much about, you know, that's the, just another uh, book I read. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Well, cause they talk about how like, um, third shift people end up having a lot of health implications, uh, right, it's bad, know, yeah. doctors, nurses, long hours overnight. They're missing the healthy daylight. And yep. then to make themselves get the healthy day late, they end up sh cutting their sleep cycle shorter. The recovery is worse. Everything we're talking about. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, and that's a perfect segue back to the detox genes and back to that pa paper you have pulled up on your screen. Um, you have a plus plus vitamin D receptor mutation. Um, just one of them, but it's significant. You know, it's plus plus. So you got a bad copy from both parents on your vitamin D receptor. So what that means is you got to be especially careful with vitamin D. I hope you supplement it. Or get I, I, sunshine. I do not, 
but, but you it get, will, you get it will, well, oh God. Yeah. I mean, I mean, mountain biking, road biking, skiing. I mean, yeah. You know, rock climbing, Spartan races. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but I, I will say shout out to my boy, Vinny. Um, I'm about to test his new vitamin from my buddies. Uh, I don't know if you heard about this. He was making a new D three K combo, uh, mm. pure vitamin. And since they're fat soluble vitamins, he's building it on, our, our favorite olive oil company, Villa Capelli, they're using their olive oil in the vitamin as a fat carrier. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that yeah, should be arriving any day now. I'm about to try that bad boy out. So you're telling me awesome. I do need D. <laughs> you need a lot of D. Yeah. I would recommend 5,000 to 10,000 I use, oh. which is, yeah, which is higher than normal. But I mean, you can check your blood, but, um, you know, you want to make sure your blood levels higher than normal because the receptor is not picking up the D very well in your body. And, uh, you know, I mean, ideally you just get sunshine because your body will regulate this naturally as long as you're eating good fats, especially cholesterol, because vitamin D is made from cholesterol. Oh, yes. There's no shortage of that, man. I am, <laughs> yeah, I I'm steaks and chicken and I'm crushing bacon. I eat five, six egg omelets. So yeah, naturally, I'm probably making up a good amount of that gap, I hope. So, but yeah, again, except, as long as I'm in the daylight, you're telling me. Yep, and in the winter you probably want to be more aware of it than normal. Okay, what's what to our listeners like? What is five to ten thousand IU's? Like, what is that? Okay. Is that that's a fat like over a thousand percent daily value because the daily values are so low, they're ridiculous. They're based on average Americans, and average Americans are sitting in cubicles and never getting out in the sunshine, watching TV, all this kind of stuff. That used to be me many years ago. I was yeah. uh, I worked I worked in call centers, uh, telecommunication companies for over a decade. So yeah, yeah. yeah, there was no daylight, bro. <laughs> I, I, I hear you. And, and I feel for people, but you know, that's how we've based our medical values on. And there's actually a researcher at Boston university. He got fired by BU and then he sued and then they had to rehire him, but he, he got fired for telling people about vitamin D and how the, you know, you need to take more and the daily values are all screwy. And now he does consulting for zoos. <laughs> like, and, and it's hilarious because you've heard of like panda bears or whatever that get infertile in a zoo or, you know, these big lizards that, yeah. that get infertile. And then they say, oh, it's because they're in captivity, so they can't have babies. But in reality, usually it's because they don't, they have glass and the sunshine's not getting through and their vitamin D is so low, they become infertile. And so this guy at, from Boston University, I know him because I did my PhD there. He literally just consults and test the vitamin D of these animals, gives them more vitamin D and instantly makes them fertile in most cases and gets paid big money for this. So it's, he's got a pretty good thing going. <laughs> so uh, he's definitely taking advantage of what he knows that other people don't believe. So smart man. And at least he's helping yeah. the animals. That's all that matters. I mean, I don't yeah. know if you I remember this, my fiance, she's a equine vet. So she's a, she's a animal doctor. So nice. I love hearing stuff like this. Yeah, We love, yeah. We love pandas. Yeah, and in the winter time, you know, you can supplement. I, I again, you know, you want to especially supplement the D. Well, especially in the winter, naturally, the 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 concentrations and dosages of healthy UV and everything else from the daylight is just naturally less in the winter time. And again, I'm a huge skier, so I'm probably getting more than most just because of skiing a lot. But yeah, it doesn't yeah. mean I should not supplement. Well, there's something with the angle of the sunshine too. So when the Earth is tipped at at such an extreme that the the proper uh, UVB that you need to turn vitamin uh, to turn cholesterol into vitamin D. Mm -hmm. It's not even achievable. Um, this, this is something that uh, do you, do you we've talked about this before. You, do you follow Dr. Jack Cruz? A little bit, yeah. He's the, neuro sure. the neurology neurosurgeon guy. He purposely in his story on our he was episode fifty one. He was the first time I started doing videos of this stuff. He purposely moved to Louisiana because of that exact reason. He said. No. It, Louisiana is closer to the equator. You have much healthier dosages of sunlight year round. And he yep. cares so much, obviously, about his cellular health that that's why they moved there. Because he said the equivalent of that is like if you're at like 14,000 feet in Colorado on top of a big mountain as far as dosage. But he said, to your point, even that is not as good as being closer to the equator as far as healthy daylight dosages. Yeah, Mercola, you know, Dr. Mercola, Joseph oh, yeah. Mercola, he moved down to Florida from Chicago. It's almost the exact same reason. I'm pretty sure that was his primary reason. So it's, it's really hmm. healthy. Yeah. Okay. So I need to be supplementing my D. All right. I got it on my, I got it on my take list a vacation. here. Yeah. Take a vacation to Florida in the winter. <laughs> this is bad. I keep taking <laughs> ski vacations. So I'm not yeah. helping myself. Yeah. Learn how to surf, I guess. Do both. 
Game on. All right, so, <laughs> so let's jump to the next one. It's BHMT. You really didn't have that many gene issues with your detox gene. Sometimes I get people with like 10 or 20, you know, a huge list of them. Hmm. And that's, that's a good thing as far as, you know, your health is concerned. But BHMT, beta or betaine homocysteine methyltransferase. So this means having a plus plus on this gene which again is a dysfunction for this particular methyltransferase. Okay. It usually gives your body higher than normal levels of homocysteine. And homocysteine, you know, you, oftentimes when doctors check your blood, they'll check for homocysteine because it's a marker for inflammation. Hmm. And inflammation, I mean, that's the root cause of all kinds of problems, joint issues, you know, cardiovascular plaque, you know what I mean? Like just a host of issues, chronic okay. issues. So obviously you don't want high homocysteine. And with this gene issue that you have, it tends to, you tend to see higher homocysteine levels. So what, what you can do to bring that down is to eat a lot of foods with high vitamin B, uh, B6 especially, and okay. that'll help bring it down. I mean, you probably already do most of these things like exercise, eat less processed sugar, you know, DHA. Or, or how about no processed sugar? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. That's ideal. That's me. Yeah. And then, and then another big one is pistachios, eggs, meats. I mean, you probably don't even need to supplement because you're eating meat. You're eating yeah. red meat every day, probably, which is ideal. You know, again, eating. Do you, do you, do you follow uh, Dr. Sean Baker at all? Oh yeah. The carnivore. Diet. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm doing what I can. I can't do everything that he's doing, but uh, cause I love eggs and bacon and everything else, but trust yeah. me. I mean, and I am doing so B12 is not B6, right? I am, right. I am testing uh, Vinny's sublingual uh, the one you put right under your tongue for better absorption B12. But I know that's not the what you're talking about. You yeah, know, B6 is different. I mean, some people have genetic issues where I recommend B12 for them, especially mm -hmm. high. I mean, anybody can take B12, but well, some B12 people, I'm getting for red meat too, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I mean, all the B vitamins, you know, these animal products are better. Yeah. You know, it's well, funny. I, I was just in a conversation on Twitter with Sean Baker because he thinks that eating any kind of red meat is just fine. And I, I tend to think that grass fed is a lot more important than he, you know, he, he doesn't prior prioritize the grass fed aspect as much because I, I see all these estrogen chemicals like atrazine from the corn and all mm -hmm. this that are storing in the meat. I, I back you up. I switched over a year and a half ago, two years ago. I just put another order in again, but there, I found a local ranch here. They will grass, grass raise the beef and I buy a quarter a year ahead of time. They raise it. So it's all sustainably raised. It's grass fed all year round. And then they only do a little grain in the end for finishing. Um, yeah, so, sure, sure. and oh my God, the flavor is so much better. It tastes amazing. So I completely agree with you. We should care about how we're sourcing these things because there is these extra additives that we don't know is going into that food. Yeah. And I mean, you tell people to go back and listen to those, uh, you know, those estrogeneration podcasts and things. That oh, trust me. When we put this episode up on the website, all of the other episodes I will be back linked in because I think it's important people to connect the dots on all of this stuff. I mean, cause you're doing a lot of great work. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Well, I mean, like just to give you an example of cows that are corn fed, they have 700,000 nanograms per liter of atrazine. Wow. And normal males like you and I, we've got about 20 nanograms per liter of estrogen. And remember atrazine acts like estrogen in your body. So 700,000 is obscenely high, you know, and for people to eat that in their steak, that's going to have an estrogenic effect on your body. I mean, it's, it's not yeah, ideal. But, but see, now this is going to be one of those things where, and again, I have friends that are vegan and vegetarian. I'm not ripping on them, but I'm against that because I, I really feel people are missing a lot of essential nutrients. And I'm sure you could talk to that, but it, the people are going to use that as a justification as to why I not eat meat. But back yeah. to your point, it's how we source the meat. Right. And the eggs too. Yeah. Chicken, everything. Yeah. Like I, I, I purposely search for, uh, if I can't get it locally, but you know, pasture raised eggs, I'm paying a premium for that. And I eat five, six egg omelets. So it's getting expensive, but I don't care. I, I'd rather know what's going into my body. Yeah. hundred percent agree. And then the other one on this particular gene issue of yours is zinc. So you should, I recommend, especially being, you know, vigilant about supplementing zinc because that will help this enzyme function. Oh, yeah. interesting. Okay. And so you want this enzyme to function as optimally as possible to lower that inflammation. You know, again, this is like a long-term strategy just to prevent inflammation, present, prevent chronic disease in the future. Um, so you won't feel an what's, immediate what's a good, so what's an example for our listeners? Cause I know when I was growing up, my dad swore by zinc to help battle, like to help your immune system actually. Um, yeah. 
because we, we grew up in farming. He always, always talking to vets. I, I feel like sometimes a lot of our, our home care came from, <laughs> from veterinary uh, education, oh, yeah. but Hey, it crosses over. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. I, I used to have cows actually, Scott, when I was a kid and uh, my dad's a doctor, but I, he had a bunch of land and I bought cows. The one time veterinary care doesn't cross over is I had a sick cow and I gave it a bunch of pills and it died. And it was a, it was a relatively small cow, like 500 pounds. And, um, I didn't realize, and I learned the hard way that because they have so many stomachs, if you give them pills, certain types of pills, it doesn't, it, the, going through all those stomachs neutralize yeah. the medicine. So you have to inject it. So we ah. used my dad, because my dad's a doctor, we used human medicine, which normally would have worked. You know, we just did the dosage and yeah, I, I lost a cow. So, because- so that was an example of where ingesting was not as effective as, as obviously doing a main line, for example, you know? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Learn the hard way there. Okay. <laughs> but, wow. but zinc, I mean, you can buy zinc lozenges and things like, but they have a bunch of sugar. So yeah, I'm not ideally, a big fan. Get, yeah, get some kind of a multi-mineral thing that doesn't yeah. have sugar. And, well, know, and again, I eat, I eat so much seafood meat and especially eggs. Um, but you're saying even at that dosage, I might still need to kind of add a little more in. Um, what's some examples of if I, if I'm still low on my zinc, cause I don't get sick. So I, I, I literally, it's like once a year I might get like a, something might finally hit me a little bit. Like I don't get vaccines. I don't get the flu shot. I don't do any of that. So, and if people are watching this or listening to this, Hey, you do you, I do me. I just don't recommend it and I'm against it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I do um, the same thing. Uh, so I mean, is there, what's an example of, uh, of how, realizing if you are low on your zinc? Uh, boy, I don't know. I mean, you can have blood tests done, but it's tough. It's like magnesium. It's hard to, you know, it's difficult because your bones take it up. And Mm -hmm. honestly, you know, you just have to eating a lot of whole foods and things like that. The blood, the testing is tough to do. But the the ideal testing for these kind of minerals is, uh, is they test your urinary output after they give you a lot of zinc or magnesium or something like that. And then they see how much your body is taking up and how desperately you need that mineral. Hmm. that's like the gold standard test. But I mean, who, who does that? You know what I mean? Like when's the last time any of your audience has gone to the doctor and they said, let's, let's supplement a whole bunch of magnesium and then test your urine. Yeah. What are you stuck in the office all day while they sit there and use you like a lab rat? I mean, <laughs> but it is a good test. I mean, right. But I mean, but my, also- my chiropractor could do the blood stuff. She, I found out she's actually got that approval cause she's naturopathic and chiropractic. And, uh, I found out last time I was there, she's like, Oh, when you're ready to do blood work, I do the whole advanced analysis. I mean, she can't do it at your level, but um, I yeah. could at least get some stuff submitted. So yeah, zinc is okay. I mean, you probably don't need to test it, just supplement it or just make sure you got foods that have high zinc and you'll be good. Cool. So next gene on there, the, the last one that you had that was plus plus again, bad copy from both parents. It's called SOD2. It's superoxide dismutase and superoxide. So oxygen, right? Oxide. So you can imagine like free radicals, you know, oxygen gets, is an oxidizer. It causes rust. It causes corrosion. Hmm. You don't want that kind of stuff in your arteries and your brain. You know what I mean? No. And so this gene, again, you've got a dysfunctional copy from both parents. It's you know, it doesn't function optimally. So what I recommend to help this, this, uh, to change that is manganese. Manganese is a big one for you. hundred percent daily value. You know, Tim Ferriss has a whole thing in his in one of his books about how you should eat Brazil nuts to bring your testosterone up because they're high in manganese. I did not enjoy the taste of those, but I've I, I eat them. Well, I was going to say, but I disagree with Tim Ferriss on that one. I did a video on my YouTube on it because uh, manganese also has a lot of phytic acid, and phytic acid is a is a plant chemical that grabs on the you know minerals, hmm. including manganese. So you're eating it but your body's not getting it because it's bound to phytic acid and you end up just passing it out. Really? So you're better to eat something like, uh, what do I have on here? I think it's, uh, pecans, pecans. Yeah. yeah pecans. Uh, yeah. And, and because those ones don't have phytic acid, but they still have high levels of manganese, not magnesium, manganese. Okay. And so again, whole foods, you know, I'm always trying to get people to eat whole foods rather than supplementing a lot. Right. Although if you have to supplement and, and that's a supplement I have listed here is liposomal glutathione that might benefit you, especially if you're stressed out or something. Um, oh, I'm a go, go, go guy. And I've been called out by, by my fiance saying sometimes I'm getting a little stressed and she's like, you need to dial it back a notch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and liposomal glutathione can help you in terms of 
you know, when your body's getting overwhelmed, it's an anti, it's a super antioxidant. Your body makes it. It's like the number one source of antioxidant that your body uses. Huh. So like eating, you've heard of antioxidants and blueberries and all this kind of stuff, but yeah. glutathione, the one your body makes is by far superior. I mean, you make so much more of it. it it's so much more effective. Right. And if you take glutathione supplements, they don't work because your stomach acid destroys it. Oh. So you have to take this more expensive stuff called liposomal glutathione, which means the glutathione is packaged into fat balls. Um, oh, f- again, it's one of those things where fat's a carrier? Yeah, okay. exactly. And, so and if the, I had regular glutathione, I would want to take it with shots, shots of olive oil. Like I, I do shots of olive oil every day anyway. But <laughs> You could, but you'd have to blend it and it may or may not work. Because mm. you, usually what we do in the lab, I've made liposomes, and those are little fat balls. And you use a sonicator, so you use this machine that has really high – pitched uh sound waves and it blasts the fat with these high pitched sound waves and they form these little balls so it's kind of an extreme like you, you guys have a take- lot of fun in the lab <laughs> i mean i can just imagine yeah. what you guys i mean clearly that sounds fun actually so oh yeah yeah it's it's it is fun yeah well, how it's long ago did you guys figure out you could do that well it wasn't my lab is you know it was historical a lot of people in the past have used uh sonication to make liposomes wow yeah it's Fancy. a drug delivery method. Yeah. Okay. It, it, yeah. It's expensive, but it, you know, <laughs> it sounds like it. <laughs> this <laughs> so is not the, a, this is not a DIY thing I could do in my garage. Yeah. And, and you know, you could, you're not one of these guys that has really big glutathione issues. Some people have glutathione mutations in their genetics that, that tell me that indicate that you need to supplement glutathione all the time, but you're not that case. You just okay. maybe try it when you're really stressed out or something. It'll, it might help. It might not. If you don't feel a difference, don't, you know, stop taking it. Like okay. don't take, and that's it for your, your, uh, you know, your detox genes. The only other one that I flagged was, uh, you had on your NAT2 gene at the bottom of that page, it's, it's called N-acetyltransferase. Okay. Hey, here we go. You had, you had a plus minus, which again, that means you got a bad copy from one parent, a good copy from the other parent, but you had two plus minuses. You had two on that same gene on that same enzyme. You had two spots that were iffy. Right. So the odds of, of that enzyme not working properly are pretty high. That's probably a dysfunctional enzyme. And that one is involved in breaking down carcinogens. And okay. obviously there's like a thousand carcinogens out there. You know, there's so many of them, especially with all the artificial chemicals out there these days. Yes. So, I mean, you probably, did, you probably already eliminated most of your carcinogen exposures. Well, I mean, but uh, this one, you know, exponentially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, but we're still surrounded by this stuff. We're still being exposed by it. I mean, it's probably in our clothing and everything else. I mean, it's- Yeah, and vitamin C helps this one because vitamin C, you know, sometimes people overdo the antioxidants. They take too many antioxidants and that actually helps. If they have a cancer cell, like a tumor, hmm. and you're supplementing really high dose antioxidants, it can actually help the tumor survive and, and grow longer and more. So it's actually bad. But vitamin C is unique because your body turns that into hydrogen peroxide and that helps to kill cancer cells. So it's an antioxidant first and then the cancer killer second. Wow. So vitamin C is something you want to, you know, like take a little bit more than normal. Make sure you get your bell peppers or kiwis or strawberries or whatever. You know, I've always told people that, I mean, I've read studies where you can put thousands and thousands of milligrams of C in you or whatever the dosage is and your body's just going to pee it out if it's getting too much. We used a ton. I used a ton of vitamin C powder supplements when I was firefighting. Um, I keep yep. like sh- I keep them in my shirt packet, and as soon as I started getting it, I-, I would just. It became a program. Like every few hours, I would just cycle it with my water when we're hiking to make sure I never cramped up. I mean, it was just one Perfect. of my little hacks. So That's smart, especially because of all the smoke. That's a smart thing in your case genetically. The oh yeah, only- it was not. It was not a good two years. Those two years were definitely probably my unhealthiest years. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then the, the final thing on that is garlic. Um, actually diminishes the function of this enzyme even further. So you want to be careful not to supplement garlic every day or something like that. Some people take garlic pills. Oh, in your case, you wouldn't want to do that. I mean, you can have it occasionally, but you know, it's going to basically make, make your body store carcinogens a little bit longer. So it's okay. not something you want to do every day. You know what I mean? So, so if you're, if you're doing a detox or something, you know, normally people can have garlic, you know, every day, it's not a big deal, but for you, I that, that's it. fine. I, I only do that like, yeah, like probably once a month, once a, once a week or so in my cooking, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll yeah. cycle it through because I just don't like too much garlic. Uh, and, uh, unless you and your significant other are definitely eating it together. Cause that way you stink together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Um, well, but I mean, like I said, the only time I have problems there and you can close that. That's all we're going to do with that stuff. Cool. But, uh, and then I can see you a little better on the screen too. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, and it's funny because right before, while you were doing this, um, my future sister-in-law geeks out on this stuff too. So I hope she sees this video. I'm going to text her, let her know to, she will probably end up hiring you because she geeks. I didn't know she geeked out about this as much as I did, but she nice. had me take my raw data and submit it to a site called maximize genetics. They let you do a free analysis and they did a quick little skinny on my NT. H uh, F R, which yep. that yep. was the, that was like the first thing she wanted me to do. She's like, Scott, you got to yep. send the data now. And I'm like, why? And she said, yeah. it's so important. So you, had, I, you did have that 1298, uh, mutation, but it was a plus minus. Okay. And it, like, there's a, there's a couple different versions of MTHFR. Yours isn't too bad. It's, it's not something that I, I would get too, uh, work. And up again, for our listeners and watchers, like what is the big concern around MTHFR? Is it, is it means you're pr more prone to disease, illness? Like, what is that all about? Genetic stuff? I mean, this is all genetics. What does that mean? Yeah, MTHFR, is, it, it stands for methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. And uh, Say that 10 times fast. Yeah, that's why we call it MTHFR. So I, I prefer <laughs> to call it Monday, Thursday, Friday because MTHFR. Oh, nice. Um, I like that. And I'm, I'm actually right. I'm working on a book on that one. So you can imagine I literally have like four or five different books I'm working on because that gene is so important and so under utilized. I mean, literally probably about 60% of the DNA clients that I have, I do DNA consulting every single day for people. Wow. And about 60% of them have significant MTHFR issues. Yours, like I said, you have a plus minus MTHFR on 1298 on the position 1298. So there's, mm -hmm. you know, when you have these enzymes like MTHFR enzyme, it's a huge protein made up of thousands of amino acids. And at that one position, you know, you have a plus minus. So 50% of your, you know, your MTHFR uh, enzymes have that dysfunction. Wow. But it's not a major one. Like there's one called 677. That's a really major one. And in, in when people have those major issues with MTHFR, usually you see things like miscarriages, you, you know, because folic acid is involved in making DNA. So if you have a fetus, you know, the baby is dividing cells really fast and, you know, the making a ton of new DNA. So you need a lot of that in precursor. You need the ingredients to make DNA, which is folate. Okay. But, here, but the crazy thing, the, the story, the backstory with folic acid is it's a fake chemistry compound. It was made in a lab. It was patented. It's artificial. It's not found in nature. Whereas folate, like methyl folate, yours, it, that's natural. That's found in raspberries. It's found in spinach. It's found in a lot of foods. I grew up with raspberry plants going around the perimeter of our fields at the farm. So we got to go pick fresh raspberries all the time. Yeah. And that's, that's the best way to get it because folic acid, you know, like if you've got the MTHFR issue, you're mm -hmm. literally doing your body harm by taking folic acid. Wow. Because you're plugging up all the receptors with this artificial chemical that your body can't really process. And then when you eat something that has methylfolate, like raspberries, your body can't even use the methylfolate because it's got all the folic acid plugging up all, everything. You know what I mean? So in, in this situation then, so let's say, let's say I was following Dr. Sean Baker's protocol where, you know, let's say I'm all meat and I'm pretty heavy on my meat and I'm fine. Right. So, but am I going to get what I need from that style or yeah, yeah, he, I mean, he swears by it? Right. So well, some people have genetics. I, every once in a while I find somebody who's really who really benefits from the carnivore diet. And I tell right. them you should do the carnivore diet. I have a guy in New York city. I, I have put him on it. And his doctor hates me for it, you know, Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but it's rare. I mean, honestly, most people don't need to go that extreme. I don't, you know, I'll tell, I would tell you if I thought that's what your genetics indicated. Sure. But in your case, you know, honestly, you had a bunch of genes that told me that you're super flexible in terms of diet. You can basically do any kind of diet and you'll probably be fairly healthy as long as you keep, you know, working out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, that's, I, I, that's, well, and that, that's helpful for everything that I'm doing these days and trying to help people because I've done, I tell people all the time, like I, I love to experiment, but that doesn't mean you can do everything that I'm doing. Everybody should be testing and experimenting and not just reading a magazine article and just saying, well, that's the new, and I hate the word diet, so no offense, but like I'm really trying to sh me get people to migrate over to the term lifestyle right? Yeah. Diet to me has become a bad four letter word, not because of people like you, it's because of bad marketing. And as a marketing consultant, it just drives me nuts. I'm like, stop it. It's people, people now see the word diet and they think short term. They're not thinking long term. And that's why I like the lifestyle piece.
you know, or calorie counting or something. Oh yeah. Calorie counting and all that. And, yeah. And you, don't, you don't did, get me going on that. <laughs> you did, Yeah, I know. Right. Me either. But you had a, you had a couple of genes that were involved in risking uh, risk of diabetes. So sugar for you would be a bad thing, you know, like a lot of sugar. And thankfully you've already gotten that out. One well, of them was that's interesting. Yourself. That, that must come from my dad's side because eight to 10 years ago, he all of a sudden became a type two diabetic. So I've been really trying to help change that. I mean, he's down to just one medication, which is great. And obviously, you, uh, I follow the Vinny part of my protocol that is from Vinny. I'm a big believer in no sugar, no grains. I mean, I do, I do put life into living. I have red wine with my fiance from time to time, but I'm not chugging it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny they say that because you had a gene. Let me just look at all these genes I flagged here. Um, uh, you have I don't know how you know all this stuff. <laughs> Well, I wrote it down. <laughs> uh, you have a high, you actually had a high risk of paranoia from cannabis. You have a plus plus. <laughs> if you have cannabis, you. I just you got back from Colorado. Variety. I was there in February. Um, you want to get those varieties that are low paranoia? You know. I don't think they put that on the packaging, do they? I mean, oh, they do. They, you can find oh, out, uh, oh. some. There's some things that make you have a higher appetite. There's some things that mess with your head more. <laughs> some varieties, excuse me. But let me, let me, you had the gene that indicated that you're probably, I want to find it here on my page, but yeah, you have a reduction, you're a plus minus, so not a plus plus, but you have a reduction in heart disease for, from drinking red wine, which is a mm -hmm. great thing to have. So that's, Okay, so that is a genetic thing, right? Because yep, everybody yep. just thinks, oh, I'm just going to drink red wine because that's what helps all the Italians. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not that general. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's, it, the gene is called cholesterol esterase transplant transport protein it's cetp and the wow. reason that i bring that gene up is because uh mice don't have that gene and so if you're doing my mouse studies it screws everything up number one but it's also a cholesterol transporter so anytime you're doing like plaque studies where you're looking at plaque in the arteries and you're feeding mice cholesterol it's going to have a totally different effect than it does on humans and that's something I've been writing about in this book, Blubber Brain, that we talked about last time when we talked about fat. I can't wait for that book to come out, my friend. So, <laughs> Yeah, it's because I, I do a lot of analysis between humans and mouse models and animals and rabbit models. That, because so much of the cholesterol research is based on these ridiculous animal models, hmm. and they have no bearing on human you know, physiology. The animals are so different in terms of cholesterol. But it's a little bit of a side topic, but... You know, again, but in, well, it relates so the to one, red wine. <laughs> the one gene, you're saying that definitely works to my favor for red wine. So I'm glad because in November, we spent two weeks in South Africa and I got to go visit some wineries there. And, you know, over a year ago, we were in Napa Valley and got to taste a lot of wine there. So I'm not a walking wino, but I do enjoy some red wine once in a while. So, and I had a class last night. So, but that gene does not relate to... Like I cut all beer out of my life, which is weird for me because I used to race mountain bikes in Colorado and all my buddies, like every mountain bike race, there was breweries and stuff there. And everybody's like, I can't believe you cut that out of your life. And I said, well, number one, it's basically liquid grain. So yeah. now I've flipped over and I do red wine and now I do scotch you know, because of the distillation process. It removes all the impurities. So I love that. So that's something else that I kind of learned from uh, Vinny's show. Would you say that that gene relates to any of those areas at all or no? I don't think so. It's just with the red wine, but I agree with you in terms of cutting, cutting out beer, mm -hmm. you know, because of the grains and the, infl and the, the biggest sugar. thing is not just grains. Like it's, it's the inflammatory response from the excess sugars and grains. Am I correct? hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you're good with dairy too, by the way, a lot of people aren't good with dairy, but you're all, I looked at your dairy genes and it doesn't seem like you're going to develop a sensitivity to dairy or you probably don't have a sensitivity. Well, and even there, you being the scientist, you could probably back this up. I'm, I'm a big cheese guy. So, uh, now Grant growing up, I mean, I used to chug milk, like it was ridiculous. I mean, I even, I even worked at a dairy farm and rode my bike from our farm to work at a dairy farm. So I've been around milk my whole life. But I don't drink milk anymore. I'm not a child. So we're adults. Right. Like I, I believe I read a study where we're the only mammal on the planet that is still feeding milk to anybody <laughs> beyond like four years of age. Right, right. So I don't know if you'd agree with that. But I'm like, listen, cheese sure. is fine because it's not processed. Like it's not the same process that we do with what we do to our milk. Cheese, butter, great sources of healthy fats. Yeah. What, where do you stand on that? I agree. I don't drink milk anymore. I used to, but I, same thing, man. I, I even make my own ice cream because 
you know, there's no reason you should have just mountains of sugar in your ice cream. Thank you. But I think the dairy fats are excellent for you, especially if they're organic and grass, you know, pasture raised type stuff. Oh yeah. There's a place south of here, uh, Lake Nakamixon. And I think it's, I don't know if it's called wow cow. No, I don't know what, I forget the name of it, but it's a grass fed dairy sourced. They use the, it's their local farm. They make their own ice cream. So my little reward to myself is when I finish a really hardcore mountain bike ride on the way home, I stop there and I get myself a little thing. So I tell people like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still eat ice cream once in a while, yeah. but I have all this other stuff in my life to balance it. And I, that goes back to your point. I'm balancing this. Yeah. And some people, you know, they're so sensitive to either casein in the dairy or the uh, lactose, you know, mm -hmm. it's good to know genetically what you have a sensitivity toward because casein is totally different than lactose, but people that are sensitive, they usually just say, Oh, I'm lactose intolerant. But in reality, most of the time it's casein mm -hmm. and that's a protein. And so even cheese can disrupt certain people's digestion. Can you, can you clarify that real quick for some people? Because some people, I mean, and you're good on time right now. Oh, always. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. I'm a shake. Guy. I knew this. I knew this was going to yeah. take a while. <laughs> I'm, a sh I'm a shake guy, right? So yeah, I, I consume, it's a undenatured way. Okay. It's a New Zealand way. So it's, it's gra from grass fed cows in New Zealand. That's my nutrition business that I use. It's, it's, so it's a way source, right? Yep, and yep. I learned from one of the researchers that did all the research and all the doctors who helped invent this stuff. He just told me this literally, I'm going to be airing his podcast uh, next week that he figured out that if they, a scientist from Europe figured this out, it has nothing to do with this company. He figured out you take a good quality source whey protein. And I just started testing this. He said, put it in warm water up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit or less, only with our stuff because of the quality of the whey. Mm -hmm. And he's, I was like, really? You want me to make a shake with warm water? He's <laughs> like, hold on, and let it sit for 40 minutes. The reason why is because our shakes have all the live enzymes and all the healthy enzymes. They haven't been stripped out because of like the high manufacturing processes to many, you know, make powdered protein. Yep. And so he said, we found that if they wait 40 minutes with it sitting in the warm water, the natural enzymes naturally break down the casein. Sure. So after that process, almost anybody can drink that. And I was like, yeah, yeah. really? That's I had awesome. no idea. I, well, the crazy thing to me is they sell casein protein supplements and people take casein, which is- Yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> well, it's just a way to get rid of the garbage, you know, like and sell it. Yeah, I was like, that, that's, that's the crappy byproducts. And somebody's like, oh, it's protein. I'm like, yeah, uh, no. no, I'm not taking that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, protein's not protein in that case. But, and, and that's another thing about cheese, right? Because bacteria, if you have good cheese that's naturally produced and naturally fermented and all this, the bacteria break down the casein you know, so unless you're super sensitive to it, you know, you can, you can get by it oftentimes with good quality stuff like that. But, but you know, it's good to know either way. Right. Well, and would you agree that a lot of the sharper cheddars uh, or the, or the hard, the firmer cheese uh, versus the really, really soft cheeses, a lot of the soft cheeses have, are of a sweeter, um, I guess, com composition. Uh, versus a lot of the harder cheeses. Because uh, I heard that about mozzarella, for example. Like if you buy just a, like actually Vinny said this, he's like, don't buy the string cheese. He's like, buy the big, you know, ball of like legit hardcore real mozzarella that's soaking in the water when you buy it. And he's like, yeah. cut up your own pieces that way. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're geeking out on cheese right now, people. I mean, this is, <laughs> we got wine, we got scotch. It's not just DNA. <laughs> but I, I well, had no idea you could see that, that level of detail. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, I even got one here. It's you're, you have a plus plus for longer telomeres. So if, have you ever heard of these companies that will test your telomere length and you can monitor your telomeres? I take a supplement to helps my telomeres. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you can literally tell your biological age from your telomeres. So some people are eight, let's just say age 40, right? But their telomeres indicate they're age 30 because they're healthy and they're eating healthy and they're exercising. I want to do that test. I want to you prove should, to yeah. people how healthy I am or, well, or a, I'm going to crash and burn one or the well, other. <laughs> well, you're going to, you're going to come up really healthy because genetically you have longer telomeres and longer telomeres are, are better. So that telomeres for people that don't know, they're end caps on DNA on chromosomes. So they're literally like an indicator of how long your DNA is. And wow. as you age, your DNA gets shorter and shorter. It yeah. gets chewed up. Well, it's like, um, like picture like a, the chromosome, right? They tell you like the, the telomeres are the, like, if you, if you picture one of those legs, it's like little discs 
And yeah. he says, as you age, that, that gets shorter. So the whole, I think the one little slogan from the supplement that I took, they said, listen, telomere is long, you live long. Telomere yeah. is short, right. you're screwed. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and you have this plus plus gene in the myo, it's called myoneurin, N-E-U-R-I-N, myoneurin. Hmm. And that, that gives you longer telomere. So even if you were had a poor diet, you probably have longer telomeres than an average person, but because you have an awesome diet and an awesome exercise lifestyle. And by the way, you have a gen, your, your genetics, you are plus plus for endurance. So I've always said, I love endurance sports. You're an so, endurance guy. Okay. Yeah. And that's more rare. I mean, honestly, most people are more of like a power lifter type genetic yep. that I come across. And that's a really important thing to know because you know, how you work out can really change your health if you're doing it in line with your genetics. This is definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little secret for today's call. This is a little piece of what I was hoping to get out of it. And like I was, when she bought me the test, she's like, hey, I got you the ancestry thing because I'd recently uh, lost my last grandmother and her brother is still alive. And apparently he's been doing all the family tree history stuff. So I'm like, oh man, I got to get this test to see you know, how Irish I actually am, which apparently there's a lot of German and stuff mixed in there too now. But uh, I really wanted to understand the health and fitness components because mm -hmm. there's just, at this stage in my life, I'm 40 years old. I've done marathons and 100 mile biking events and ski racing and all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, by now I've kind of figured myself out and I was just, I want to see if I was right. And I've always leaned towards an endurance type of mindset and training. Yeah, for sure. And, and that's something I always, prioritize in these genetic sessions because it's so important i mean you don't want to be training i in my opinion you want to train the way your body is designed and optimize things that you're already good at okay you want to, and, and kind of promote things that your body wants you to promote and and by the way just on that same note you're you have a, a gene that a plus plus gene for slow metabolism of dca it's a chemical in public swimming pools so if you spend a lot of time in public pools, you, you know, you, it gets through your skin and it ends up staying in your body. And it's a sim they actually use this, this chemical in chemotherapy if you have cancer. Oh, okay. And so, you, you know, it's not something you want to be exposed to. And so if, if you're swimming and training for a triathlon or something and you're doing it all the time, you want to avoid those public pools. Okay, well, I'm about to start training for my first triathlon. Nice. Because I suck at swimming. I never learned how to do it. But when I have taken a couple of lessons, like at the Y or whatever, a couple of years ago, they said, oh, once you figure this out, she's like, you have the perfect frame because I'm 6'4", I have long arms, nice. I'm all legs. Nice. Um, <laughs> but so I'm, look, I'm researching places now, like one of the places, uh, you've heard of Rodale Press that writes like men's health and all that. They have an actual swimming facility here on, on Cedar Crest College's campus. So I'm currently going to, I'm checking their pricing now, but nice. um, either way, that's still considered a public pool though, right? It probably, I mean, you can ask them if they put DCA in there, if it's in the cocktail of chemicals. The other thing you can do is rub coconut oil on your skin. Okay. Like a thin layer of coconut oil will prevent that chemical from going through. Oh, wait, but if we go back to our last Help. podcast episode, I mean, I thought, I thought coconut oil was killing America, <laughs> so according dangerous. to the American Heart Association. <laughs> and that, that same president who wrote that report, now he got a heart attack and he's no longer with us. You know, Yeah, I guess he didn't know what he was talking that. about. Yeah, that's um, insane. Again, ladies and gentlemen, go back to that podcast episode. You can search for Anthony J on our website at livethefuel.com. And seriously, I'm not kidding you. We have a lot of, actually the three back-to-back -back episodes when we aired that one with you was all on that exact topic. And actually real quick, that was episode 87. So 087 was on the AHA topic in coconut oil. Um, but yeah, yeah. back to this point here. So I'm already kind of weary about public water anyway and uh and city water right because i just got done installing a water softening system in my house because we have city water yep. and i've done a lot of research into how chlorine is really bad obviously on your gut health and gut bacteria so that's an issue too right because that's in a lot of water especially city water yeah. nowadays yeah i mean you're better off training in the in the lake or something you know find a lake with a lot of sand Okay. Jump, jump in, swim across there. I just have to grow the cojones to, <laughs> to, to get to the, cause I will tell you that lake I told you about Lake Nakamixon, they do triathlon training there. It's a big yeah. dark lake. I, yeah, mount, I, I mountain bike around it and I've, <laughs> I've kayaked through it. Yeah. I haven't swam in it yet. So, well, um, you know, Tim Ferriss, he's got some good stuff about swim training and, and this whole technique. Um, I, I actually learned a lot from it because I had a similar thing where I, I, 
one of the, I'm, I'm really poor at, at the crawl stroke or the breast stroke. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to develop that. And I wanted to learn how to do the butterfly also. <laughs> but I mean, at first I figured I'd learn the breast stroke and, and Tim Ferriss, he, 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 he put me onto some really good stuff with the, the breast stroke and how okay. to do it without stress. And, you know, I mean, it's just, I don't want to get into it cause I don't know enough about it, but I did learn a lot from him. From I'll have to look into that. Cause yeah. I've listened, I've, I've read most of his books and I think I remember him talking a lot about, you know, hacking the swim thing and yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. on YouTube or something, I bet if you search Tim Ferriss swimming, I'll bet this program would cool. come up and all that. You know, all right, let, me so, just give you, let me give you one, one or two more. Yeah, please. Cause I have a, one or two more and I don't yeah. want to miss, miss anything. Um, you had a plus plus gene for resistance to blood thinning effects of that of aspirin. So um, what that means and the gene is ITGB3. It's integrin. It's, it's part of the platelet allo antigen system, you know, so basically it's about, it's, it's part of your platelet, the way your platelets function. Okay. Um, yeah, so sometimes if you have like a artery plaque or a brain plaque, you know, like a thrombosis in your brain, like a, a piece of plaque that, clots in your brain right they'll give you a really high dose aspirin right away to thin your blood a little bit yeah but in your case that's not going to work it's not going to be good um so i figure it's good to know that i don't think you're going to get any plaques because you're eating healthy fats and you're eating you know you're burning them and for fuel and all this but what you would want to do is take something called warfarin and i mean they'll that's pretty standard they they give warfarin for that but they all also give aspirin and warfarin is it was developed as a rat poison. Oh, so dear it's Lord. not it's not something you want to take lightly, but uh, because <laughs> it thins it thins the blood so much, it kills the rats if at a high dose. But if they give you a really low dose, it's okay. If you if you've got this weird, you're not know, gonna, doc, you're, you're, you're not gonna, selling me on it. You're really <laughs> not selling me on it. I, I, well, I'm I, trying I, to give I, you an option. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really it's very rare that I take an aspirin or an Advil or an ibuprofen. I mean, I'll be in it. Sometimes I beat the snot out of myself, like after a CrossFit comp or something like that. And uh, I, I might take one after next weekend because it's two back-to-back -back days in Philadelphia of workouts with the team that I'm on. I'm like, I don't know what's going to feel like. But I also have I've read the studies about how aspirin, you know, stuff like that. We're yeah. still talking about pills. And again, going back to your gut health bacteria, it's probably not that good to take that stuff. So Correct. Right. Yeah, and then okay. you had another one with the with the, uh, the heart. So you had a twofold increased risk for myopathy, which is like an injury to your heart muscle. Oh. If you're taking statins and I know oh. you're not going to be taking statins, thankfully, but statins do not belong in the human species people. <laughs> okay. We do well, not. <laughs> yeah. Well, every once in a while I do get somebody who has a genetic, they have this, this gene uh, or a series of gene issues that are called uh, hypercholesterolemia. So wow. you've got some people actually have genetic mutations where their body is just making a ton of cholesterol. And in that okay. rare, in that rare, rare case, statins are awesome. But for the general population, it's absurd that people are getting prescribed statins by the millions of people. You know, it's just a crazy drug. Well, they tried doing that to my dad. And my mom yeah. said, she's like, no. And I'm like, thank you. I'm very proud of you. Because they said, well, you're, you're, you are diabetic. So maybe, you know. We should probably put you on a statin for your blood pressure. I'm like, probably. You don't just pop people on pills and drugs just because it seems it seems like that might be a good idea. It seems like it might be a good idea. Come on. Yeah, yeah. And the gene specifically, just in case your audience is interested, it's called CoQ2. So you've heard of CoQ10, right? Yeah, I take CoQ10. Yeah, this one is you have a plus plus issue with your CoQ2 gene, which is another one. It's just a mitochondrial uh, protein. It's, it's specific to your heart. So okay. statins, statins will screw that gene up in your case. And again, it'll probably, it just has, it gives you a higher risk for heart injury. And because you don't have any of those, those hypercholesterolemia issues genetically, you know, there would be no reason you should be taking statins. Okay. So I was already going to stay with when again, but now with the DNA evidence, I'm definitely no yeah. way in hell ever getting involved with that stuff. So yeah. And that's all and, and I got for you. <laughs> well, so I also thought, I thought I saw in some of your data or maybe it was in my data wasn't there something relating to coffee or caffeine? Oh, yeah. That's in my thing, yeah. Because I love coffee. Yeah, and you're a fast metabolizer. Yeah. So, so when so I'm you, having my days where I'm just – I'm like I could, I could basically be straight lining an IV in coffee, I'm actually probably okay with that because I'm just processing yep. it fast, right? Yep, yep. You're one of the few people. Yeah, it's a negative. <laughs> it's a minus-minus gene actually, so I, I overlooked it. But, um, but no, okay. that, came, that came up on that 
page that I had sent you we were talking about before. Yeah. So ca- caffeine probably lasts about four hours in your body. It's four hour half life, which is pretty quick. I mean, some people it's eight hours, you know? Well, and, and I'm again, shout out to Vinny again. I'm using his pure coffee club coffee right now. And he's got a athletic blend that he found a species of coffee bean that has like 50% more caffeine. Nice. So <laughs> I, I had that today awesome. and I, I only had, I only had one, you know, one batch all day. So, but you're yeah. saying even, but they, you're saying I, I literally process it twice as fast or? The, yeah, twice as fast as like a plus plus person with a genetic issue there. Okay. And a lot of people have that genetic issue and you also don't have any negative genes. Like a lot of people, I was just doing a uh, DNA analysis with a, a baseball pitcher mm-hmm. and uh, we actually recorded it and stuff. So it'll be public eventually. But, um, you know, because I work with a lot of pro athletes and a lot of uh you know, strongman competitors, whatever, a lot of high performance people with their DNA. But this guy, um, he had a lot of genetic issues with anxiety and caffeine, you know, he had, and and so like a lot of the negative side effects of caffeine. So sometimes you can metabolize it pretty quick, but then some of these, you know, side effects can be real bad. In your case, you don't have any of that. So I say like two thumbs up for caffeine and that's going to be really good for you. You just reinforced everything that I'm doing, Doc. Okay, I'm loving it right now. So, but I, this is so important, though. What, what you just hinted at, this isn't just for pro athletes, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and so, everything we're doing here tonight, do you usually just recommend 23andMe, uh, or do they just? I mean, are you eventually considering launching your own product? Because, or are you just, you know, I'm just going to focus on analyzing this stuff, and that's it. Because it looks like there's plenty enough business out there for you just to just focus on analyzing it. Yeah, that's that's my focus for sure. Yeah, and although, uh, although I, I I am interested in epigenetics, which are marks on top of the DNA, but that's a oh whole yeah topic, you know. Well, there's been a lot of people talking more and more about epigenetics, and I know that's definitely one of your niches. So, and that'll probably be another book that you're probably going to be putting out. It is, yeah, and I'm I'm studying that at the Mayo Clinic, so with stem cells and. You know, but again, that's a totally different topic because DNA, you know, D- if your DNA is screwed up, it doesn't matter what your epigenetics are because the enzyme is not going to work properly no matter what. Epigenetics is more about how much of the enzyme your body makes. Hmm. So it's, a, it's, it's an important factor. It's super important, you know, look at epigenetics, but the technology is not quite there yet. So, okay. you know, it's important, but DNA is also super important. I think the, the gold standard in the future will be to have both pieces of that puzzle, have information about our epigenetics and info on our DNA, and then we'll be able to, I'll be able to give you all kinds of additional info about diet and exercise and sleep. Okay. Well, so everything we just did tonight, and real quick, I'm going to pop on the screen share again here because I, I haven't been on your site in a while. I apologize, you know, and because you've, you've tagged me on Instagram and I'm like, okay, I'll just, let's go ahead and set up the podcast and we'll record all this. So everything we did tonight, is this outlined on your site at AJ Consulting? Yeah. Yeah. It's under DNA analysis. There's a tab called, uh, there we go. DNA with Dr. J. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I like it. And you didn't go J A Y. Yeah. D R J. Cause I hashtag that sometimes. Oh, that's good. Make your own hashtag. Smart move. Um, yeah. And then on this, on this page, I'll probably put, I'll probably link this podcast that we're doing right now. Oh, you're on with Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan Munsey. Great yep. guy. Oh yeah. I've listened to his show. So yeah, and we I did s- his DNA on the air. And then at the bottom, um, I explained that, you know, I'm, I'm taking clients right now if you're interested and it's $300 for a 60 minute session. And that includes my analysis. So I, it, I do a lot of pregame, you know, where I sit down and look at your data before I even talk to people. Oh yeah. I mean, how long ago did I send you my data? Wasn't that like yeah, a, two not, weeks ago or something? Yeah, not, not too long. Yeah, that's about right. It usually takes me a week or two, depending on how many other DNA clients I have and how busy I am at the Mayo Clinic and all this. Yeah. Well, but the yeah. funny thing is I have friends of mine who just actually, did, did Vinny send you his yet? Because I just listened to his, his podcast and he We're going to do his. Yeah, we're going to do his. <laughs> good, because he was just talking. He's like, oh yeah, I've got my 23 and me and he's like 73% Italian and yep. um. But the funny thing is you didn't bring up anything about the ancestry. I love the fact yeah. you just focused 110% on the health data. So right. I think that's something important to clarify for the watchers and the listeners is that my test was the ancestry and the actual uh, health data because you, you don't always get that data. That's a good point. Yeah. And, and honestly, all I need is the ancestry data because you can get people can get the cheaper version of the of the 23 and me test and that's mm-hmm. all i need to use because i get the raw data which is everything okay 
So they don't like the extra, what is it? 50 bucks or an extra hundred bucks for the, that, that next level up on 23 and me. Yeah. That's, and just actually, their, that's their report, you know? So you got the, you got the full package, but you don't so, need to do that for me. For me, you can get the cheapest version. From so here's Amazon. And, yeah. uh, so, uh, I'm like Vinny now. I've, so it's a hundred bucks difference. Yeah. yeah. Cause I have, this is my influencer page. If you don't have this, you need oh, to set this up. Uh, but cause I, I still pay for the podcast myself. I haven't monetized. I don't have advertisers, but I'm like, you know what? I'm having my web people now add the banners to the website because I'm always pr promoting your book, everybody else's books. I'm not even sure if I had a chance to add your book on here yet, but like podcast gear, like all the stuff that I use, uh, I'm a big yeah. fan of Yeti mugs, but, uh, I just added on the 23 and me for tonight because yeah. There it's you just, you just go to amazon.com slash shop slash live the fuel and you get to my page. You can see all the stuff that I'm recommending, but admittedly, I didn't buy both of these tests. I bought the first one there. It's health and DNA and, and ancestry. So, right. so they give you a report. So the data they get is exactly the same. So that's $200, but the hundred dollar one, mm -hmm. which is just the ancestry, they still do all of your DNA analysis and they, and so the raw data file, like the one that you sent me, that's yeah. all, it's the same with the hundred dollars or the Ooh. two. Wait, so hold on. <laughs> Here's your hack, people. So you're saying buy the cheap test, even though you're only, even though it says Ancestry, you get all of that raw health data in there. No, you no. just don't get the, their fancy reports on the website. Yeah, and their fancy report's not even that good. So the stuff, I'll, the, I'll, I'd be able to tell you what their fancy report will say, plus a lot more. So I always tell people just get the $100 version and save $100. Dude, I wish, well, luckily, I mean, my, my fiance is very frugal and she's smart. I think she found like a deal and yeah, yeah, she, didn't, she didn't pay the 200 bucks. I just know that. Um, she wouldn't tell me what she paid because it was a Valentine's Day gift. <laughs> uh, but this is a great helper because, I mean, look at how much data you gave me tonight. That's powerful. Right. I would rather, instead of paying 200, you buy the $100 kit because you get the raw data. Here's your hack, people. Listen to this. <laughs> then you take the extra $100 you didn't spend and you put it toward Dr. J's services. So instead of having to worry about, oh, it's $300 for Dr. J, like, actually, well, no. He just showed you how to save $100 on 23andMe. You buy the base kit. And now you only got to you know, set aside another 200 bucks. And so basically, all said and done, 400 bucks, you get all this raw data and you get all this powerful DNA level data about yourself to help you really start figuring out how to live a healthier lifestyle or reinforce exactly. your healthy lifestyle. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better. That's exactly what I tell people. Well, I mean, you're the doc, I'm the business guy. I try and help you, you know, sell a little bit here. Uh, because honestly, I did not know about the, I had a feeling about the salt intake, did not know that. I'm doing a little review on my bull board here. Uh, I had a feeling about long sleep cycles because sometimes you just feel lazy, but. Um, I did not realize that I'm naturally a night person. So interesting. And that's actually a great hack tip for people who are trying to really focus on when they should be doing extra work. If you're naturally a night person, maybe you want to do that extracurricular work or research or whatever in the evening. Yeah. 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 Uh, and that's a night owl. I definitely did not know that I need to start supplementing D more. And again, I mean, we're about to come into spring and summer, so maybe I don't have to do it as much. But like I said, I'm about to test Vinny's vitamin anyway. And manganese, real quick, um, I think I, talk, I told you about the Eat Pilly Nuts. I actually recommend them oh, on yeah. my site. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. be adding them to this influencer page too. But they, they just literally, I literally just had a whole envelope arrive today. They sent me more nuts. It's awesome. Nice. But I, I use them on my hike on, on the Tuckerman Ravine. And those nuts are grown in the Philippines in volcanic soil. And nice. I, just, I just Googled, I went on their website, and per serving, it's a 0.7 milligram of manganese, which is about 30% of your daily value. Yep. So, and how many so, servings? I mean, you know, you always eat like four or five servings when something tastes good, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. They're, they're little, the little uh, they, it's funny, when they first launched their little, the, the nut bags you get the nuts in, they weren't resealable and really a full serving was the whole bag. So I'm just, it's like crack, man. They're so good. Yeah, yeah. But uh, now they make them resealable and I don't really reseal a bag. I still eat the whole bag. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but again, it's hard to overeat on good quality nutrition, right? Whole foods. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, other than that, uh, you reinforced red wine and cheese. Good. So <laughs> my fiance has already warned me that if I ever stopped drinking altogether, she would probably divorce me. I know that sounds really bad for people watching this, but it's just, you know, it's life balance. You know, I like a good scotch. I like a good red wine once in a while. It's balance. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. So we're coming to the end of the show here. This has been amazing. Um, 
anything else in general for people watching this, hearing this, that, I mean, we already gave them the hack on how to save money on 23andMe. I love that. I mean, is there anything else that we're missing or you think it's just really, really important for people if they've been on the edge about thinking about DNA research? Because I'm so excited. I want to buy this for my fiance now. Yeah. I mean, what, what else are we missing? Is there anything else you think that we need to put out there or just to clarify oh, for people? I mean, some people are going to be listening to this, you know, six months from now, a year from now, whatever. My book is going to be called DNA with Dr. J. Um, and I'm going to call that DRJ instead of DR period J-A-Y. Smart, just, smart. Just, just because it's fun. Um, yeah, so you can look for that book and for people that are listening right now or live, you know, that sort of thing keep an eye open for it because it is coming out and I have been working on it. I'm about one third done with it and I'm excited about it. It'll help a lot of people. Well, you're going to be coming back on. I want to be one of the podcasts if you're game to help you promote the launch. So that way, the more podcasts we have out there learning about what you're doing with the Mayo Clinic, uh, the, the valuable knowledge you've already, I've already read, you know, the, all the, you know, the books you have out now. So I, I'm just jonesing for the next editions. And then uh, we need to help you get more audible books out there too. Cause that's how I really crush books is the audio. So are you going to be doing yeah. the voiceover for that? Always. I always do. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Good. I don't like it when people hire like the voiceover artists. I want to no, hear no. you cause you're going to throw extra nuggets in along the way. Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. hundred percent. Well, we normally close out all of our podcasts with, you closing out the show as the co-host, right? So is there an all-encompassing message that you want to I mean, offer of this 23 and me theme or, you know, just in general moving forward that people should understand from a healthy perspective? Like, is there anything else you want to leave behind for people as a message? Yeah, for sure. I think people need to realize that health is personalized. You know, everybody's a little different. Don't be too dogmatic about it and say, Oh, I'm a vegan and everybody else has to be a vegan or I'm a carnivore and everybody else has to be a carnivore or whatever. There's definitely certain principles that apply to everybody. Like eating processed sugar is bad for you, but you know, there's a lot of diversity and a lot of customization. And so, you know, you want to be really, I don't know, aware of that and knowledge is power. The smarter you are about your health, you know, the smart, the, the more healthy you're going to be, the more, the, the more you take control of this, the better it's going to be. I think the reason Socrates was considered the wisest man in the world was because he knew his limitations. He knew himself. And that's what they put on the, at the Oracle of Delphi. And you can go to Greece. I've been there. It says, know thyself. And this is part of knowing thyself, looking at your DNA. Wow. I love that, man. Well, listen, hang tight. I want to give you a proper goodbye once we sign off the live here. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, all this data will actually become a podcast episode. This is the first time we've ever actually aired a virtual Facebook Live. I've done Facebook Live podcasts in person, but never literally from different time zones. And again, where are you at? You're Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. I, was, I, was like, I, was like, I, I didn't want to say Wisconsin because you guys sometimes don't like that crossover. I know it's the same time zone. So, <laughs> yeah. but, but again, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'll be sharing this online. The podcast will be out in the next two weeks. So he'll probably be live literally probably by either the end of April or beginning of May. I got to check our calendar. Uh, obviously the podcast is listening to this. You're already listening to it. So it's already gonna be live when you hear this on the podcast platform. So thanks for tuning in. And again, as a reminder to our listeners and watchers, go check out AJ consulting uh, All this stuff will be linked on live This Facebook live will be cataloged and, and saved on the live the fuel Facebook page. So you can go out there and, and come back and watch this later, pause, play, whatever you got to do. And also remember I have the new influencer page. So if you're looking to get that 23 and me kit, so you can start working with Dr. J go to amazon.com slash shop slash live the fuel. So again, Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening in. And like I close out all my podcast shows, remember, you too can live the fuel. And we'll talk to you guys again soon. And we are off the live. Great. <laughs> well, talking about getting outside the comfort zone. Uh, I'm like, okay, what do I click on next and disable this? And <laughs> so the yeah. video is the video is still recording just for extra fun because that's what we've, yeah. we've always done it that way. And this this will then obviously go to YouTube then too. So on a quick uh, awesome. help for you, if you end up doing this on Zoom, apparently it's only one live channel or the other. So you can go to YouTube yeah. or you can go to Facebook. So cool. It would have yeah. been cool to do Facebook and YouTube at the same time. That's yeah, going to be interesting. I'm surprised they don't. Of course, it might overwhelm your, your internet.
Uh, I actually asked the Zoom guy on, on, oh, yeah. on the support before I got on the phone with you over this feed. And he said, streaming and recording, he's like, our recording platform does not affect the bandwidth. Oh, he wow. said, it, it's, it all comes down to obviously the camera and us just talking to each other. So that's why I started moving my podcast later in the evening. I found that between uh, oh. like 5 and 6.30 p.m., I've always been getting issues with bandwidth oh. because it seems like everybody's getting home and turning their TVs on or something. I don't yeah. know. Wow. Um, Interesting. I don't know if that's in your area I, or not. Well, I, that's a good point. Well, I plugged my, I just started plugging mine in. You know, everybody tells you to do that when I, when I do podcast interviews, but I never. Oh, it's hardwired. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So that's what I started doing. That's probably helped too. Well, my laptop is a, like these minimalist laptops, super travel friendly, converts into a tablet and everything else. So I don't even have the ability to plug a cat five cable in. But I got one of the uh, I got one of those Amazon Basics uh, internet jacks. So the Cat Five plugs into that, and it plugs right into the USB port. Nice. So yeah, that's the way to go. And uh, and I'm again, telling you, your stuff is just top of the line. I mean, your microphone is awesome. <laughs> Everything. I don't know, man. I'm digging so your. Good. You got a little classy headset. I like it. It's, <laughs> it's 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 an epitome of a doctor. It's white. It's pristine. It looks it looks. You look very sterile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I did come straight from the lab, so. Yeah. Well, this has been great, man. Uh, I'm fired up. I had no idea that we'd be, I mean, it makes sense that you would offer this a service, but we never really dove all the way into it. And I can't believe I didn't know you did 23andMe analysis. I am going to promote the living crap out of this now. So uh, <laughs> yeah, you've, got, yeah, you've got an ambassador supporting you, my friend. So. Oh, that's, that's awesome. And, and like I said, I'm going to do it on Vinny too soon because he just got his back. He just told me. Yeah. So well, that's the, the, be- the, I listened to, I'm all caught up. I listened to his, la- his most recent three episodes today while I was traveling. Nice. And the last one, I think it was 1039. Uh, he mentioned that he's, he's like, Oh yeah. He's like, I found it on like 73% Italian. And, but he's like, yeah. I got to dig into it more, but he didn't mention you. So I, I had a feeling that <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that's a, that's an, op- that's an episode episode right up his alley. So. Yeah. He probably figures it's such a ways off to ske- you know, we haven't scheduled it yet. So, yeah. because it takes me a little bit of time to analyze it. And- That's fine. I'm going to tweet. I'm going to go back to this video. I'm going to play it and then I'm going to pause it. I'm going to take a, a screenshot of it. I'm going to tweet that. And I'm like, hey, Vinny, beat you to the punch. You better get your, your, <laughs> your, your analysis done. And yeah. uh, we, can ha- we, can, we can both air our podcasts on 23andMe with you. So Yeah, yeah that's um, awesome. I'm telling you, a ton of people. Like that one with Ryan Munsey. I do, I've done a couple episodes with him. But the one on 23 and me just drove a ton of traffic for both of us. And it was, you know, people search that and yeah, people enjoy listening to like somebody's, you know, customized DNA. It's yeah, kind of I got cool. nothing to hide. I don't care. So, and, yeah, and, and people need yeah. that. People need this. They, they need the truth. And I don't care. I had a, I had a blast. You, this is way, and I love the fact you just helped us hack 23 and me and yeah. help people save money too. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same data. Yeah. Well, is there anything else I could do for you, sir? No, that's, that should be good. Thanks for inviting me. You know, well, no, thanks for doing this. I mean, I, I don't even know what you guys charge for this stuff. So if I could send you uh, any, any clients, trust me, I'm going to be sharing this. I'm going to take this video. I'm posting this to LinkedIn. I'm tweeting it. I'm Instagramming it. (laughs) Yeah, it's going to be good. I'm going to have to actually, I will actually end up taking this, the document you sent me, I'll, I'll do the traditional podcast, which is its own blog feed on the site. I have an older blog feed that I just don't publish stuff on because I'm always publishing the podcast twice a week. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to double dip. I'm actually going to do a summary with this document you sent me and may turn that into a blog post cool. and then hyperlink all that back to you as well. So you will end up having two blogs online driving traffic your way, traditional blog and podcast blog, and we'll see what happens. So Yeah. Nice. Thanks. All right, man. As you, oh, you know what? Can you, have you thought about taking your logo and creating a, a graphic with the 23 logo? And like, are you allowed to do that? The 23 and me marketing wise? I think that should be like, you should create like a 23 and me analysis logoed service or something. Just something to think about, which just popped in my head. Cool. Yeah. I never like some, some, something for like Instagram, like people draw, like they see the logo and then they see your logo. And then it's just like, I don't know, the word analysis, <laughs> hashtag yeah. DRJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, that's a good idea. I'll think about it. Thanks. Yeah, cool, man. Well, this has been great. 
thank you for all this time. And uh, like I said, we're going to share the heck out of this and, and hopefully basically uh, burn you out from having to do so much analysis. So <laughs> That's good, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. That's fun. All right. It's fun, it was right? definitely fun. It was, I had a blast. So good. Uh, that's, what, that's, that's the best. I'm going to have to find, I got to go tonight and look at all the healthy communities I'm into and figure out who I can share this to. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Thanks, right, my friend. That was fun. Have a great night. All right, Take you care. too.